Welcome back to Circle Jump. This is part three. We're going to start adding some behavior to these circles, different modes that will increase the difficulty. The first one we're going to do is a limited circle, one that's going to run out and not let you orbit it over and over again. You've got to jump off of it before the time runs out. Let's start by adding a label node to the circle that's going to show our remaining number of orbits on the circle. So we'll go over here. I'm going to put a little bit of text in there so we can see it. We're going to set the font and we're going to make a new dynamic font and the font we want is in the assets folder and the size we're going to use 64. All right, we'll set this to make sure everything is centered and we'll set the layout to center. Okay, in the script here, we're going to add an enum for our modes. And I'm gonna, I like to do my enums in all caps, they're constants essentially. So to start with right now, we have static and limited. Static is the ones we've already made where the ring just sits there. Uh, but if the circle has a limited number of orbits, that's what limited means. And now the, so that means we're going to need some more variables. We're going to need a mode variable to track what this circle's mode is. And we can even make it start out being static by default. And then we're going to need a num orbits. That's how many orbits does the does this circle allow? And then also current orbits is how many you've completed. Right? And when current orbits is equal to num orbits, you are done. And then we're also going to mark the orbit start position because we want to be able to count when we've gone a full circle. So that's basically going to be where on the circle you started. And every time we reach that point, that's one orbit complete. Okay, so let's add a function here for setting our mode. And we'll pass it the node we want to set our mode to. And then depending on which mode that is, we will do different things. So if we have static, I want to hide the label. If we're on limited, I want to show the label, but I also want to set its text. So we're going to set its text to current orbits, right? Which is we have started with three, we have three remaining, right? That will tick down to two and then one and so on. Make sure we show the label in case it was hidden. And that's all we need there right now. And we should probably set that mode in the init. Now, these modes are going to get more and more difficult. So these are things we're going to want to show later in the game, right? When you first start, you're probably going to only have static rings. And then when you get to higher levels, some of these limited ones will start showing up. So the circle doesn't need to know anything about what level it is or anything. It just needs to be told, you should be mode whatever. So we'll, def we'll default it to static, but we'll let you set it to something else if you want. And actually, I'm going to def default it to limited for this test because we want to test out the limited ring. Uh, if we have that, then we will set mode. We'll call set mode on there. All right, so we're going to want to set that orbit start position when we're captured. Now, right now, uh, that's getting set right here. When the jumper gets captured, it's setting the pivot rotation. And I think I was doing this to avoid having the ring have a reference to the jumper, but I think that it's probably going to be necessary anyway for some other stuff we're going to do. So we're going to take this line out of here. I'm just going to cut that. 
and then in the circle we're going to add a variable to track the jumper that's attached to the to the circle that way when we capture we can set that right so we can set the pivot change this to a dollar sign notation pivot rotation is going to be our position Right, same thing. Actually, we want it the opposite because we're going in the opposite direction. Target position minus position dot angle. But then we need to know what target is. Or jumper is, I should say. But that needs to be set when we capture it. So when we capture it, we're going to have to pass it a target and we'll assign jumper target. So in the main, when we say object.capture, we pass it the player. And now the circle gets the jumper's position. It can set the orbit start equal to that position that we just set. So now we know where the orbit start rotation is, or start position, and we can start subtracting one from it every time we complete a full circuit. So we're going to want to do that in process. If if we're in limited mode, right? we don't, we only care if we're in limited mode, do we want to subtract, and there needs to be a jumper. So if we have a jumper on the ring, on the circle and it's in the limited mode, then we want to check check our orbit. So I'm going to make a function for that. What this one does is it's going to see if we've gone a full circle. And we could be going in clockwise or counterclockwise, so let's just take the absolute value here. Pivot rotation minus orbit start. If that's greater than 2 pi. 2 pi is a full circle. Then we want to take current orbits and subtract by 1, update the label text, and then we want to update that orbit position. So let's do this again. All right, so let's try it out. Let's just go ahead and set num orbits uh, equal to like 3 to start with. And then current orbits should be set equal to that when we start in limited mode. And let's just try that out and see how it looks. All right, so we got three, two, one. We jump over to this one. The start point was there. Two, one. Okay, it's going to go to zero because we didn't tell it not to. But yeah, now it's ca it's counting down, and it's counting a full rotation like we wanted. Okay, so when the orbits run out, so here when we got to zero, then we're going to say if current orbits, then we want to tell the jumper to die, which we haven't told it how to do that yet. Uh, we'll remove our jumper reference, and we will call the implode. So that'll be fine, except now we're going to get an error message on jumper.die. So jumper.die is going to be pretty simple to start with. Right now, all we want to do is queue free the let's hit target equal null and queue free. And then while we're at it, since we're over here, something we didn't do on the jumper yet was connect the visibility notifier. Screen exited on the visibility notifier should also call die. All right, let's see what happens now when we run out of orbits. Yeah, there we go. The circle disappears, so does the player. Something else I wanted to do with the limited mode was draw a visual indication that your 
that your orbits are running out, that the circle is filling up, let's say. And so the, as a first pass at that, what I thought I would do was use from the docs, we can steal this draw circle arc poly method, which draws a pie shape. And we can animate that going around and filling up. So I'm going to steal that and paste that right in here in the circle script so that we can use that. The only thing we have to change is the example in the docs is written to work with degrees and we are using radians. So we need to change this to not convert and 90 becomes pi over two. Okay, so now our circle arc poly function is ready. We need to write our draw method, right? Which will be called to do the drawing. Now since draw will get called once in ready, and then later whenever you call update, we need to make sure there is a jumper or we don't try and draw anything. And then we need to figure out uh, our radius, what radius we want to draw this circle pi piece at. And I'm going to use the radius of the circle itself with some padding, which we'll play around with. I'm just going to use 50 as a nice round number right now, divided by the num orbits and then we're going to, I want that to grow as the number of orbits decreases. So we're also going to just take num, the difference in num orbits minus current orbits and multiply by that. And that'll make it grow. Then we can call our draw circle arc poly function. And we want it centered, so we're going to do vector 2.0. The radius, again, we probably need a might need a little padding here to adjust it. So that's what we're going to use to tweak that. We want the arc to start at the orbit start. We want it to end, let me go to the next line here, at the pivot rotation. And we want it to be the color we want is, for now I'm just going to do red. because We're going to come back and be more intelligent about how we do colors in a later part. So now this will draw that circle uh, and then we just need to call update in our process function to make it show. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, so there's my circle. You can see it filling up and growing, but you can also see that it's off, right? It's 90 degrees off. And that's because we need to add, let's apply over two to that. And we need to add plus pi over 2 to that. So that it'll match where our actual circle is. And there you go. You see it filling up. Jump up to this one. Filling up and then growing as it starts to fill up. That's pretty good. I kind of like how that looks. We got a little bug there. Looks like our screen exited killed our player at the same time as we hit the circle. So. I think what we could do to fix that is go over here and if there's no target and you go off the screen, then die. Because that way, if you're on a circle that's near the edge, you could sort of go off as you go around it. I don't want that to kill you. So that should fix that. 